Dudes Behind the Foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by ZocDoc. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for the reco? Well, guess what? All those people don't know crap. You need ZocDoc to get a professional that can help you out when you want it and when you need it because they are fantastic. I actually burp right now and I saved that. I'm amazing. And guess what else can save you? ZocDoc from the headache, from all these crappy, crappy people on TikTok telling you what to do with that stupid bump inside your butthole because nobody knows what that is besides a medical professional that knows what they're talking about. Well, so go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. Dudes behind the foods listeners, listen, if you're trying to save big bucks, but you need to talk to all your friends about your emotions and your feelings, even if they're tired of listening to it, you have to do it with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile is just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. Say bye-bye to your big wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. That's Mint Mobile, baby, to get your new unlimited wireless plan for just $15 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash dudes. That's mintmobile.com slash dudes. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash dudes. Dudes behind the foods listeners, if you have a family like I do, and also Tim, you know how much your loved ones depend on you. In a worst case scenario, you, you wouldn't want them to worry about money because you are Mr. or Mrs. or whatever. You are money bags and they depend on you. So you need to get that policy genius, my friends. Policy genius knows how valuable your time is. That's why their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With policy genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Dudes behind the foods. Yo, it's the dudes behind the foods. Dudes Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, look, when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> the alarm gives off a warning. I think I'll never make it on time. Yeah. Uh, What's up, y'all? Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> dude. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> That's a new one. That's a new one, Tim. Uh, do you know what that was, David? So, wait, we can't mention it. <laughs> I know exactly. Okay, cool. It, was, was, it just, was that little Saturday morning yeah, show. Just that double check. Rang just a double bell, like, you know. <laughs> I'll say it in Korean. <laughs> uh, what's up, y'all? No, because it was on. It was in that country too. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. I want to watch it dubbed in Korean. It's oh yeah, we were dubbed at like 161 countries or something That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind what's the up? Foods. I'm Tim Chantharongsu. And I'm David So. Wow. For the first time ever, ever, ever in our uh, two years, almost 100 episodes. Wow. You are our first guest. guest. We have never. Wait, wait, wait. Ever. You've we, never had somebody on the show? It's we only never been us. people. We actually, Do I. Do not like people I generally? Turn, Is that why? I mean. Or are you just like, we don't need anybody? Both. Okay. I usually turn, like, people have asked like like people that are kind of in the food world like yeah mm-hmm. hey, we should have a guest i'm like i'm like honestly it's just this is kind of just me and david mm-hmm. so this is a very special that occasion. is very i feel it's extremely special, special. Mm-hmm. wow we've never ever had a guest wow ever, 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 ever. wow you know so, so now, Tiffany it's, Thiessen. now it's, it's two dudes and a gal yes two it is dudes and a gal behind the foods yeah right. i gotta tell you something this is cute as shit. <laughs> this is cute as shit. It's adorable. And look at, and, and this picture, right? Does this come with the book too? Uh, Well, it's a separate thing. I mean, I gave it to you. But oh, thank I'll you. I'll be giving it, I just did a fun little playlist of fun, nostalgic oh, sort of 70s, 80s tunes. Very cool. So, so yeah. that picture is cute as shit, but this one is like, mm. <laughs> This one is uh, this go. one is mm, as shit. Mm, 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 mm. I feel that a lot of celebrities are kind of going into the food space. Um, and yeah, it's been kind I have of been like, for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, for you, that's my second book. Well, well there you go. Oh my fuckers, catch up. She's been about this yeah, life. Catch up. Yeah. <laughs> so like for you, what made you want to make a cookbook then? Even for the first one, like. Well, funny enough, I. 
it's funny. I think most people start back the other way around. So I had a TV show, a food show on Food Network, Cooking Channel sort of thing for What's a that few called? years. Can you talk about that? Uh, I don't know if I can or not. Right. But if, if not, they can just bleep it out. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just talk so, naturally bleep it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was a, sh- a show called mm. And so... I get it. Yeah, get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> catchy little title, isn't it? It's mm. cute. I know. It was mine. My idea. It was so it's original. It's cute and it's... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Relax didn't give that to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and then from there, people were like, why don't you do a book? Why don't you do a book? And I was like, oh, I guess I could do a book mm-hmm. because I'm doing a food show and I'm making recipes and creating and all that kind of stuff. So, so you're really hands on with just, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this it was just not, a progression oh, yeah. that seemed sort of real. normal, not even thinking like I would ever do a cookbook. It was more like people were like, why aren't you doing a cookbook? You have mm-hmm. a TV show that's, you know. Ooh, tell, so tell, that, tell, tell, what tell them what the book is, is about, what it focuses okay, on. Okay, so this book is my second book. So as you can see, it's called Here We Go Again. So there's a reason for the title for two reasons. One, it is my second book. My first book was called Pull Up a Chair. This one's my second one. So here we go again, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And Let's it's also it. about. And then show people. What's that? <laughs> show people as you speak about oh, it. Sorry. <laughs> Cute as hell. And um, it's all about. Leftovers. What to do with leftovers. Oh. So it's repurposing. Do you like that? So Are you a leftover I, person? So I did a show <laughs> yeah. called, uh, this one's on Netflix. I can tell. I don't care. I'm not a part of anything. You can still, you can still bleep it. <laughs> I don't give a You'll bleep it later. Fuck. <laughs> uh, it was called. Wait, no, you should give a fuck because I'm trying to get uh, our podcast. A, I do care. A, bleep it out. A SAG deal. So. Okay. okay. You should it was, give. It was, you it was, it was a show on Netflix called. Uh-huh. And I was one of the judges. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, so the concept. So was yeah. that people taking leftovers and yeah, doing so something with them? It was a challenge. So a lot of uh, home chefs came in, uh-huh. and you know the whole concept is, is like we grew up, you know, making what we had at home yeah. were leftovers, mm-hmm. and right. so whatever we had, we had to create our own. Well, thing, so that, so that's sort of the concept of the book. It's sort of the idea came during the beginning of the pandemic, where we were we weren't going to the grocery stores often, right? So we were mm-hmm. kind of forced to stretch the food, mm-hmm. not because of anything, but. We didn't want to die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, and then it got me starting to think like, this is how I grew up, not mm-hmm. because of pandemic and germs and all that kind of stuff, but because my parents didn't have a lot of money, and so my mom was always trying to stretch the food because of the budget, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. we didn't have shit, literally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was like, oh, my mom's roasted chicken was made into enchiladas the next day, mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. So I was raised like that, and then I was like, you know, what? there's no cookbook out there like that That's ever. Fair. So yeah. I was like, I'm gonna do it about leftovers. I, I used so to have a, a running gag with me and my high school homies mm-hmm. because I would go over to my boy uh, Pedro's house, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, do you have any food? He's like, ah, I mean, I don't know, man. Whatever, like, is left over, right? Mm-hmm. I, he's like, I don't think so. And I'd come back with like a feast <laughs> that, I, like, <laughs> that I like reinvented and oh, warmed yeah. up, and he's like, dude, where did you? you even get that from you know what I'm saying yeah. and you're like your fridge <laughs> yeah like sorry about it and it's like left over like pozole and like oh, I had a whole piece pozole. I put together well I mean the thing is too like most people like the home cook's job is actually very difficult right mm-hmm. and you don't start to realize this until you get older and you start cooking at for home. other people and now I understand when my mom would like make something I don't want this she's like shut the fuck up oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we didn't have that option exactly. it's so funny it's, how mm-hmm. these kids nowadays are like I don't want it I know. you know and they're like I'll make it myself and they'll try to go and I'm like no 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 that just, that's not even an option <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah like, you're I, not gonna go in my kitchen and make a mess yeah exactly I'll be telling my two year old shut up shut up and eat the peas <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no actually we give her way too many options <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she hates it all she you'll, just wants to pull your logo you'll stop yeah. you'll stop <laughs> Like the whole point of like cooking at home too is really utilizing what you have. And yeah. So my wife doesn't cook at all. Yeah. And if she That's does, husband, I don't yeah. eat it. <clears throat> so <laughs> <laughs> you're smart. We don't. We don't eat it. <laughs> so for her, she'll look at the fridge, and because she doesn't really cook yeah. or even utilize leftovers in the yeah. way that I do, she yeah. goes, "There's nothing to eat here." Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. That's my I, husband too. And I'll list it out. I'm like, "You can make this, 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 this and this." Yeah. And she's like, "I don't see it." I'm yeah. like, "The fridge has food. I don't I know, know what you're talking about." It's a palate, people. It's like you know, <laughs> bro. I think I don't. I think leftover people. I think we're just different than, mm-hmm. than not leftover mm-hmm. people. Because yeah. even with Chia, Chia also does not cook like like that, right? But. And I don't cook like that, but I so you know I finesse the leftovers. Mm-hmm. But even oh, sometimes yeah. I'll come out, she'll just forget that we even have leftovers. So I'll well, she's got baby brain right well, now. Yeah, Give her a damn that break. Too, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'll come. Give by. the woman a break. <laughs> whatever. You no know? epidural. I mean, whatever. she's feeding from her body. She's Natural literally birth she's vagina. She's feeding okay. people from her body. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And my children have very big heads, so I. I have, <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, her yeah. vagina went through it, right? Yeah. Um, but so I'll come back with like a warmed up pasta or whatever mm-hmm. from like a couple nights ago. She's like, What's where that? did where did that come from? Yeah. And I'm like, girl, we have boxes and boxes of leftovers, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then she um uh tells me that I You need to go make one for her. That I need to make one for her. <laughs> and because I snapped at her, we oh. n- no sex for a month. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best things is people have been uh, utilizing that I personally really love is they have they are people are starting to learn how to utilize the Costco chicken in every way possible. Oh yeah. That five dollar I mean, chicken yeah, 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 is yeah. like literally everything. You yep. take the bones and the skin, uh-huh. make stock out of yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. Some of the chicken goes into chicken yeah. noodle soup, some yep. of it goes into chicken salad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can even make pho out of it uh, yeah, now too. Yeah. It's it's pretty crazy how how, fun. Yeah, and I think that's just how we all grew up, right? Yeah, it's like agreed. this is going to be applied in so many different yes. dishes, right? And so going back to another like last reason, I, I feel like I really wanted to instill in my children too just about food waste. Because mm-hmm. truly, like we are we're just stupid people mm-hmm. and we waste so much shit. I mean, so much. Oh, okay. Like the st- statistics. Not me. Look at these <laughs> <laughs> but like 40% of food. Yeah. From farm to table is getting wasted. And I was telling yeah. my kids, like, I was, I was like, that's like mommy going to the grocery store, getting like five bags of groceries and then just taking two of them and throwing them in the trash. And, you know, my son's little and he's like, why would you do that, mom? I'm like, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, so anyways, there was many reasons why I wanted to do the book, but it was those were the three main reasons. Yeah. And even now, too, because I started this whole permaculture, like farming project, mm-hmm. like we literally waste absolutely Nothing. Everything that we eat, scraps That's goes so into great. the compost pile. Yes. Everything that we cut down, we chop yes. down. There's even programs now where people have so much, you know, when they're like chopping trees yeah. down or whatever, yeah. there's so much mulch and just mm-hmm. leaves and dry leaves that we oh, use yeah. for carbon material. Mm-hmm. They'll take a truck and they'll dump it in our front lawn for free. Yeah. We use that, we yep. compost it, and That's it goes so back smart. into the ground. Yeah, for we've real? Been, we've yeah. been composting for. I want to say now 15 years, I would say we've been composting. Oh, wow. Um, we have chickens and stuff. So if it, it literally, <gasps> if it wasn't. Bro, that's yeah. the next project this uh, next is year. Is that what you want to do? So we're, we're doing, I mean, <laughs> ours is pretty extensive, right? So we're we're actually doing permaculture from the ground up, right? So we're going to start with the chickens. Yeah. We're actually raising um, uh, black soldier flies mm. for the larvae, for the chicken. Wow. We're doing, you're going deep. We're doing everything that's so right cool. now. That's so cool. I'm so proud of you. And yeah. those are flies They're that awesome. you feed to the, uh, the chickens? Yeah, so. Uh, these, why you got to use the black soldier flies to feed to your chicken. Because they're the strongest and most powerful of all. <laughs> so black soldier flies, if you guys don't, are, are pretty fascinating. They actually don't have mouths. Yeah. So the only time that they eat are is, is in the larvae and pupae stage, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. But during that time, they literally eat every scrap possible. So whatever stuff that you have, yeah. let's say like in the compost pile, you're, you're not going to obviously use like meat and seafood, right? Because of the rodents or whatever. Mm. Well, you throw that into like a compost tumbler with the black soldier flies. Yeah. You create this thing where the pupae will grow. Yep. They'll become flies. They'll mate. But those maggots and those larvae, you feed it to the chicken and it's like the ultimate food source for yeah. them. Oh, yeah. We, we literally, that's what we feed them. Yeah, it's Dang. the best. Yeah. And then we take, um, all we're, we're going to start all that stuff. growing Thai chili peppers. Oh, and yeah. So we worked on peppers uh. this year. And so those peppers we're going to give to the chicken, and that's how you get those golden yolks. Mm-hmm. So. Tiffany Thiessen, you know what my dad always says about Thai chili peppers? <laughs> what? Tell he me. says that— uh, <laughs> I, think I, I think I might know this I one, think but you, I just want I think you, you to— do. I, I want you to— I said it multiple <laughs> times. Uh, my dad has always said that Thai penises are like Thai chili peppers. They're not they're the biggest— and angry. <laughs> they're not the biggest— but they're the most powerful. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I can't wait for my son to get old enough to understand that because it's going to be the first thing I teach him. <laughs> and he's going to say that joke <laughs> nonstop for the rest of his life. I can't wait till he walks into kindergarten says that joke to his <laughs> kindergarten teacher. What, what chickens do you have? Um, we have lots of different chickens. I mean, they're, my, my husband's the chicken guy. I mm. take the eggs and make magic and he takes mm. care of the chickens. Awesome. You know, so but we have lots of different breeds. We actually, we have... Uh, no, we have 10 at the moment. One one had to go to chicken heaven on the earlier side. Oh. We don't know really what will happen to it. I well, mean, we kind of know what happened to it. No, it's actually a really great story. So my, <laughs> my husband left to go out of town to work and I was left to man the chickens, which I can do and I've mm. done it for years. And But these were, we had seven new chickens, right? To the, to the flock. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of a sudden I couldn't find one when I was putting the chickens in <laughs> at dusk. Where the fuck is the chicken? <laughs> I'm looking around. I'm thinking coyote or something because that's happened many times. Mm-hmm. And I end up seeing it in sort of this big bush. And I thought she got wedged and caught. Mm-hmm. So I'm pulling her out, you know, trying to get her out. And her head is completely flopped and it's doing this. Oh, It's called stargazing. What? It's when their neck gets dislocated, but it, but it's not broken. So she's still alive. Oh, okay. But she can't walk and she can't eat and drink because her head's doing this. But how does that happen? 
it's like a genetic thing or it could somebody could have done it all, like one of the chickens could have done it to her. Oh god. Crazy shit. <laughs> I kept her alive for 10 days hand feeding wow. this fucker. Hand feeding. Hand feeding it. Hand feeding it, hand dri- with little syringe, getting water. Oh my god! There was I, moments where I thought she was doing better. Then she wasn't doing better. Then she got better. Then she wasn't doing better. I finally, when Brady got home, I was like, I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna have soup tonight. Yeah, <laughs> we just gotta just throw them up a deep fryer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let happens. me ask you this: as someone who raises chickens, which do you name them or do you say like, do. okay, we do? And at what we point? don't eat them, and we eat their eggs, but oh, yeah, we don't okay. we don't eat the chickens. Oh, no. I see, I see. Because yeah. no, I wasn't they're, sure they're if it was. They're definitely. They're definitely. Pets. I mean, they'll get it's older too, too with- and when they pass, like you could do stuff with like older hens and stuff like that. And then obviously they stop producing eggs at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. But depending on the breed of the chicken, like some of them can have up to like three hundred eggs per chicken. Oh, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Some of them want to. They can literally 400. give an egg a day. Yeah. It's nuts. So then after they're done having eggs, then you eat them? No, I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. And well, I and I eat meat. That's not like I don't. When uh, I was a kid, but- uh, I had this. Uh, relative that came from Korea. His name was Tai Leung-i, and right? And Tai Leung-i came and he's from a farm area. Mm-hmm. I had a little pet chicken. I used to play with him every <laughs> fucking day. They and can't be very domestic if you yeah, if you really like, yeah. Cute. His, yeah. Name, his name was Arthur. <laughs> Arthur, did <laughs> you the, name Arthur? Yeah, because you did? for the cartoon. <laughs> oh, adorable. That's so cute. Yeah. Well, what wasn't cute was one day we were having chicken for dinner. Yeah, and you didn't know where Arthur went. And I didn't know where Arthur went. It didn't connect until two days. I was like, where's Arthur? And his little chicken fist was doing this in the fryer. <laughs> oh and Arthur was delicious. But yeah. I had no idea. He freaking killed yeah. the chicken. Yeah. And he just, yeah. you know, lopped it off. Yeah, and it was yeah, pretty yeah. much done. Didn't even tell you. Yeah, we yeah. Didn't, you don't connect things like that no, when you're a kid. No, of course not. You know, and my, mom, not. my mom grew up on a farm. So yeah. she's like, where did you where do you think food comes from? Yeah. I'm like, mm. oh my God. I was a vegetarian for a long time. So I still have that little bit of like, oh, you know, have a hard time. Why'd you go vegetarian? Uh, I think it was, I think it was just that period in my life where I think I even read a book that sort of just kind of took me on that journey. Mm. Mm. I don't know. That's why I don't read. <laughs> I don't, I, I just keep, I'm going to keep it as ignorant and as blissful as I possibly can. Uh, you know, there's can. something to be said about that. <laughs> yeah. There is the something to be said about that. I say that about the freaking <laughs> news. I'm like, you know what? I just want to be ignorant. I don't yes. want to know what's going on in the world. It's depressing. It's yeah. giving me anxiety. Like, Alcohol is bad for your li- mm. uh, yeah. yeah, I know. Alcohol is bad for it's for fun. <laughs> you, you fucking take it away. But it's true though. Like I feel like we do get inundated with a lot of bad news now. Sometimes I mean like, that's not how it was meant to be, right? Like well, yeah. the way it's just well. Too sometimes much. online people get mad at other people for not being as angry about them about certain things. Yeah. But then people also forget, like we all kind of manage stress differently. Yes, Maybe you're the person mm-hmm. that yeah. that loves yeah. like trauma porn. Like you you feed off that stuff. You like watching like, I don't Did know. Did you say trauma porn? Yeah. yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's like, the, it's like a societal thing. That but that's not, li- it's not literally porn. I yeah. figured that. But at first I was like, is there such a thing as trauma it's porn? It's just people like quote unquote getting off on, on yeah. reading and seeing traumatic. Bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. For yeah. example, um, I can't listen to true crime too much, yeah. right? But I yeah. know people who listen love to it. that love all it. the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, I know, I they know. They listen to the recordings. Yeah. I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I feel <laughs> like there was also periods in my life where I could listen to stuff like that. And then as the world is kind of going to shit, I can't listen to that shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Right? like right now, mm, no, give me comedy, give me light. Mm-hmm. Have you seen um, the whole Black Mirror series? My, my husband watched that a lot. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, apparently, and people could fact check, check this or not, but we didn't have a Black Mirror series for the longest time. And the creator was like, the whole world is this thing it's I'm trying to create. It's just yeah. too, it's too, yeah. <laughs> so what's yeah. the point? Yeah, 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 and yeah. then even when I saw the latest season, I'm like, this is not that far from what we're living now. Oh, so I know. Mm-hmm. This it's the point crazy. Of this. I, don't oh, need, I don't need to watch it for entertainment. I'm yeah. living it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah, with yeah. like, you know, how crazy AI is getting. It's like, okay. yo, this is, this is like we're living in a science fiction mm. movie right now is crazy weird and now we have aliens guys i mean we've always had aliens i know but now it's like <laughs> i want to see an alien so you, you do you, you really see want little to see mexico yeah uh, i know it was like mexico just released all these pictures get the fuck out of here yes. well, okay uh, have you not seen i don't know it? i don't know if it's facts or not yet it looks a little fake it looks a little, a little fake. it looks a little fake mexico but, but i don't know it's I like mean, these, maybe it looks a little mummified yeah. i don't know it's kind of strange well, right? my palms are sweating it's, are you excited yeah. am i going to show you something that you are uh, yeah let okay. me not even describe it to you just take a look i'm gonna i'm gonna show it to you hold on hold on oh my god are you so excited like it could be a hoax um, it's, it's definitely, yeah, but I don't, I don't know. Something. I don't know what to, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think. You just see somebody come out from the shadows. It's just Ben Shapiro. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you are an alien dude. <laughs> okay. Here it is. Oh, and we're going to get David's reaction right after this break.
Hey, you silly boys and silly girls. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for their recommendation? You know, a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel super comfortable? Wipe your tears, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance, okay? Oh, why is it that you can get the most random, wonderfully reviewed thing from around the world in just two days, but if you want to see a good doctor, it can take forever to get an appointment. Not to mention, how do you know if they're even good? Thankfully, there's a way. It's called ZocDoc, a place to find and book great doctors who actually have amazing reviews, many with appointments available within 24 hours, okay? You listen to all these quote-unquote health-obsessed people on TikTok, and they don't know what they're talking about. That's why you got crust around your peen, and you don't know what to do about it, okay? That's why you got to go with ZocDoc. It's a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for, okay? Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting. Waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist, okay? That's why we got you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. Deals behind the foods listeners. Well, 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 well. Signing your life away to big wireless providers is kind of like being trapped on a freaking roller coaster from hell. Sure, it's a little look and sound fun at first. They probably threw in a free phone, but now you can't get off month after month of insane bills and unexpected thrills like overages and surprise fees. Well, not with Mint Mobile. Let me tell you something about Mint Mobile, my friends. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are just $15 a month. Are you kidding me? That's Sheesh. Wow, that's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. Yeah. Mint, whoa, who is that? Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans for just 15 bucks a month. Whoa. Whoa, that's like two Starbucks drinks. If you can spend two Starbucks drinks for something that you're going to pee pee out later, why not get an amazing wireless plan for just $15 a month? Tim, please. Jeez. Thank you. <laughs> to get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, Get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash dudes. That's mintmobile.com slash dudes. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash dudes. That is, get the, this is not real. That's what I thought. I made this in the third grade. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's a paper mache. That's literally what I thought. I was like, that ain't real. Anticlimactic. Oh, come on, man. Oh, I, think, I think that country's just trying to get a little bit of press. Maybe. I have a cousin that looks like this. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, or maybe it's real. Or maybe it's real. Maybe it's a little mummified alien That's what body. I said. I said maybe it's mummified, right? I don't know, man. I know. It's a little I strange. Know. If I showed Breaking you, news. I mean, it's crazy. If I showed you a picture of my grandpa, you would probably think of the same thing. <laughs> that guy looked exactly like that. This is when they were revealing it. Like, look. They look like little... It looks like little ETs. Tiny little ET dolls. Yeah. So, I mean... Oh. The close-up looks even like it's a sculpture. It does. It looks very interesting. Also, I don't know. I want to see a video and of, of the person who found it. If it's just like a dude just like... Hey, well, that's bro. the thing I don't like understand is like the cover up, right? Why are we seeing all this suddenly uh, or yeah. set up, you know, yeah. government, what all is, that kind of stuff? Who's the guy who actually found it? What's the distraction? I mean, we're Obviously. able to find people who are, you know, finding these diamonds with social media. Why aren't we seeing like the people who are really, seeing, you know, finding I, it? Yeah. Listen, because of YouTube, I've been going through some random rabbit holes. And one of the things that I want to do, I know it has nothing to do with aliens, but we're talking about old things that you're bar- digging up. The like, dinosaurs? Like, you know, like Washington, they have like these ominites and cracks where they yeah. just crack it open yeah. in half. Yeah, yeah. I want to do that now. You want to do that now? <laughs> I want to just go out there and just do the thing where they crack it and then you see an ominite inside. Yeah. You can go to Knott's Berry Farm and uh, mine <laughs> fool's, fool's gold. Yeah. <laughs> that is not the same. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. We already did. We do that in, in elementary school because I'm from Sacramento. Yeah. And then we have this area that it's like the, the 49. Yeah, I would say school. all our kids here go there. Oh, really? To do it. Yeah. My, oh, my, shit. My, my daughter did it. Yeah. yeah, we did it every year and then That's we would so like funny. mine fool's mm-hmm. gold and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty freaking cool, especially, but it's not cool. when I thought it was fake. I was so sad. I was yeah. like, I'm rich, mom. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't need I don't need you at all. I'm moving out. <laughs> Dude, did you know like so they can literally make you know like lab grown diamonds now. Like yeah. they don't have to it's mine crazy. them. You know, well, that's a whole conversation too. Where they can make actors now too. See, yeah. oh. it's all the same. It's all, 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 it's all the same. <laughs> and I was like, how does this affect your industry? And it's like everything is like perceived value. Mm -hmm. So if if you're if you have somebody that cares, like, no, I need a blood diamond. I want right, that right, right. fuck. But when you look at the the actual like construction of it and the makeup, it's a fucking diamond. Yeah. 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 So whatever you like, it's whatever you like. But like for me, yeah. we didn't have those my parents didn't have those options back in the day. Nope. It was either real diamond or bust. Yeah. So yeah. now people are like, okay, well, if she wants a bigger rock, she don't care where it's from, mm -hmm. we're gonna get that one. But then yeah. there's some uh elite diamond guy who's like, No, I want to know that a miner lost his life arm for <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to come with a fact sheet that said uh, this young man lost uh -huh. his leg getting uh -huh. this diamond for me. It's, uh -huh. it's a picture of the person's funeral with the diamond. Yeah. There, you happy now? Yeah. It's like when the Wagyu companies give you like the, the stats on the cow. I'm oh. like, I don't want to read this, dude. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so a company sad. That I used to buy from that only distributes meat from the whole cow, and everybody has to buy the whole cow first before they parcel it off. Interesting. And where's this? <clears throat> I forgot the name of the company. I used to order online. So they know that nothing was wasted or yeah, what? Yeah, but they would that. kind of send the name of the cow too. I'm like, hey, come on, man. I don't even know that Gertrude died. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Send me the meat. Like, I'm, I'm good. Gertrude, but, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could um, raise an animal of intelligence and then kill it. And yeah. Eat it. It's yeah, kind of hard. It's, it's, yeah, I, it's, it's very it's hard. It's really difficult. Dude. You're, you guys are going to make me a vegetarian again. No, look. I'm eating this plate of chicken right I, now. I told you guys, that's why I don't read. And, <laughs> and whenever and whenever everyone's like, yo, check out this clip about this uh, this like slaughterhouse. I'm like, no, thank you. No, uh, absolutely not. Oh, no. Yeah, especially oh. like, you know, I don't like to read facts about how smart pigs are. I'm like, no, I I used to have don't. a pig. Oh, I did. Man. I had a pig. That shit almost ruined me. <laughs> they're super smart. Yeah. They're super, they're like, super smart. They're smarter than dogs. They right. are. Like genetically, they're really close to humans. Yep. And then I see their they stupid have eyes. They I have know. emotion. Yes. Yeah. It's weird as fuck. And, then I, I, and I literally just had snout tostadas the other day. <laughs> I, no joke. Snout tostadas. Snout tostadas. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. They were really good. Oh, wait, no. No no tostadas. No tostadas. <laughs> Robin is our resident vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah vegan, vegan. Yeah, yeah, that full vegan. That's and hard. You guys talking about the empathy for animals makes me wonder why you give me so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, we don't really give you shit. No, so no, nice. I, I hear you. Like, I think about it sometimes too. I'm like, will I go back and do that? And I, I might, you know, like, I, I don't know. I'm I, a big I, proponent of, because I'm vegan for the animals, but also the environmental reasons as that's, well. That's right. I'm right there with you. I Hence why tell I'm talking people, about food waste. And my yeah, yeah, I always tell people if like more people ate just like one or two plant-based meals a week, that's what we that do. would make such mm -hmm. a that's huge literally, impact. It doesn't have to be that's all or nothing. That's what we do. Yeah. yeah. I, my, family, so cool. my family does that more than, even more than that. Really? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't eat meat every day. I do Not that just because I think... I think I'm being a little healthy. Um, it is healthier for you. Yeah, but I I pile on the. Uh, I like to get like just animal grease and and lay <laughs> and pour it over my. <laughs> so bad. Can I get some French fries, please, with beef fat? Yeah. <laughs> Which is delicious. Which is delicious. Yeah. No, but yeah. Um. Uh. And plus. Like meat substitutes are are getting so tasty. They're getting pretty good. Yeah, I still wonder exactly what's in there. Yeah, that's the I will thing say, too. And like, is it really healthier? I feel Some like, of it is. I don't. It's questionable. Right. I feel like so. As Asians, we don't gotta worry because our stuff is mainly all carbs and vegetables. Yeah, and like meat is yeah. always a flavoring component. Yeah, it's just a small amount. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you tripping, bro? But that's why you live so <laughs> you long. Steak boy, dude. Exactly. I know. Yeah. You love steak. But no, but genetically, right? Like you know, long We're time. We're high carbs. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah, you go yeah. anywhere in Asia, like if you get meat, the meat is never, hardly ever the main course yeah. unless you're eating in abundance. Yeah. Right. The everyday house food is like a starch, carbs, or whatever. Yeah. A shit ton of vegetables, yeah. and then you'll have meat yeah. scattered throughout. So you got your fiber and your yeah, your energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like you. my mom too, like whenever we would like cook steaks, she was like, this is way too much. Like, yeah. like what are we going to do with all this yeah. meat? So she would save it up and chop it up and put it elsewhere because it was just too much for her. My mm -hmm. mom used to make some big ass steaks, dog. Well, you told me you had mid rare steaks even growing up. I didn't have that until later on in my life. Yeah. Hmm. My mom was always making it pretty bloody, you know, so I was all, yeah. that's, that's just how I like my steak. You we know? didn't have it often just because it was expensive. Right. True, true, true. Um, yeah. It was definitely like a, a special occasion special situation. Occasion. Yeah. Have you ever had Thai barbecue? 
Yes. Okay. Because then you get a little sticky rice mm-hmm. and so, okay. man. Yeah. But even that, the rice is more than the beef. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. But Koreans, though, yo, the Korean barbecue, that's like the, the meat is the star so of the like, show there. Korean barbecue, is, is especially like like the onslaught of how much meat you eat, it's like an American invention of it, right? Yeah. Mm. So right. we had Korean barbecue, quote unquote, but that's but not But it's the, not like how people perceive it. No, now. and it's not an yeah. everyday dish that we eat. Yeah. That's like yeah. something like special occasion yeah. shit because it's a right. lot of fucking meat. True. Right. A majority of the time, like if you look at Japanese food, right? Look at Japanese breakfast. Like you have these like so te- healthy. Yes, yeah, teishoku sets, right? Yeah. So fermented vegetables, pickles, rice, it's what? And then f- fermented vegetables. No, no, take te- teikutu set. You said oh, you said teishoku. Teishoku. Yeah. Teishoku. So that whole dish right there, and then you'll have like a half of a saba, like a mackerel, right? Mm-hmm. And you eat that with everything else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when when people were first eating Korean food, they would only think about Korean barbecue, which is fine. It's delicious as shit. Yeah. But that's not. But stuff it's not that, the everyday. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we were eating our like Korean people's thing is fermented vegetables and fucking soups. That's mm-hmm. like our thing. Yeah. Soups, stews, fermented vegetables, and rice. And like, that's what I grew up on. Mm-hmm. When I came to LA mm-hmm. is when I gained the most weight. Because <laughs> I came- Well, but can I can I also say, is it also because you live in your car and you're not walking everywhere too? Mm. But, I mean, for us, it was, I mean, for me, I was always big. So I was a big boy since ever. So me and food have been like connecting like this. But I also think it's geography too, right? Like depending on where you live. Like I remember when I lived in New York, yeah. I ate everything I wanted to. Oh, but you were walking. Mm. But I was walking everywhere. Mm. You know what I mean? So there was a little bit of that too, depending on where you grew up and how- Right, Good like point. if you're in in a in a city where you're not in your car as much, you walk everywhere. Yeah, my buddy, um, my friend Afrija, she she came from New York and mm-hmm. then she moved over here, and she's essentially eating the same that she's right. eating back there. Probably she's like, <laughs> she said that she started gaining weight here yeah. because she's just not walking. Yeah, right? no one walks out here. Yeah. Exactly. So, so for me, if I get my steps, yeah, like every morning, I like even before I came here, I walk. Uh, 10,000 steps every morning. That's amazing. 10,000. That's good. I get it knocked out. Yeah, I need smart. To get, Super dang, smart. It starts my day really good. Yep. My mood is a lot better. Of course it. And on top of and that. And truly, and it's free. It's free. You don't need to go. You need. You don't have a gym membership for that. No gym membership. Good yeah. joints and everything. Yes, so, I know. Tim I think walking knows. is it's so underrated. I think people, more people should do it. Tim knows. Like his wife will message me every now and then. And she goes, David, I'm watching old videos of you. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very big boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just unhealthy as hell because yeah. she never actually met me when I was big like mm-hmm. that, right? So and she was just watching old videos. Yeah, like she's she like, saying. who the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> she just messaged me the other day. And Someone cracked. ate David. <laughs> exactly. She was, yeah. She's always like that. She's like, what is that? I'm like, first of all, not is that. <laughs> all right, I'm a person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was just so big. And the, one of the biggest, and people didn't believe me, the only activity I did for the first four or five months was just walk. It's yeah, great. it's low impact, totally there for it. and it kind of sets yep. up a good habit for I you, agree. right? I agree. I so, agree. And just being outside. A lot of the times, literally too. just being outside. Yeah, and you know, like when we work out, like we watch a lot of things online where people are like, "You got to grind super hard uh-huh. to get the results that you want." No, you well, don't. the thing is, it's like let's say you work out for the and you've never moved your whole life. Mm-hmm. You start going in hard, mm-hmm. hit training. Do you think you're going to work out the next three or four days or is all your shit tore up? Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's days I get back from the gym. I can't even sit on the toilet. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, I'm so like, for- my ass. I haven't really had time to work out with the with the babies currently. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm on team starve myself currently. <laughs> And hey, I tell, tell you, your breakfast. And I tell you what, it was my, my, my breakfast. <laughs> tell your breakfast, bro. My, What's your breakfast? My breakfast is usually whatever Vader doesn't eat. <laughs> so it'll That's be actually like, not a bad idea. So yeah, I, there was a while where I was kind of making a joke out of it, but it was kind of real where I was like, my I'm on this. You didn't fix anything. You just ate what she wasn't going to finish. I just ate what she didn't yeah. finish. And it was always like half a banana um, crust from her bread. <laughs> and that was like my diet. And then like, you know, we'd order some El Pollo Loco chicken. And we'd tear up the chicken for Veda, you know, uh-huh. and then so I, I'd come into the kitchen. I'd be like, all right, what am I going to have? Skin and bones. Yeah. Yum. Or you could always go for what's on the floor. <laughs> There's a lot of that. <laughs> this fool was sent me a picture of his breakfast, and it's literally the funniest shit I've ever seen. It's like a berry scattered across the counter. <laughs> like, literally, you should I, start a whole new Instagram account. Just that's so his you know. cookbook. <laughs> I know. That's, your, that's your leftover. Yeah. You just count, it's called counter yeah. food. And it just looked like garbage. And then he's like, ooh, fiber, <laughs> yeah. antioxidants, protein. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this? Um, some cartilage from a piece of chicken? Yum. Yum. <laughs> well, let yeah. me ask you this, right? Yeah. Um, you obviously being very successful in this space and everything that you do. You know, with your kids, and you just mentioned Keep that. Keep going. Oh, <laughs> no, sorry. beautiful, oh, amazing, thank great you. personality, <laughs> super fun to talk to. I fucking love it. And you farm. Let me tell you something, girl. My heart. <laughs> um, with you talking about how you grew up 
uh, not having a lot of money. Uh-huh. Do your kids get a pass because now they grow up with somebody who's, you know, yeah. wealthy and yeah, you know, yeah, doing what yeah, they're doing? Yeah. Or do they still get the same treatment that you did? It's like, <laughs> you don't get to choose your fucking food. Yeah, no, mm. we, we have the same sort of. Ah, fucking no, 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 yeah. we do. We do. Like they, you know, like I, I really want my kids to understand. Uh, I don't think they can fully understand until a certain age. And I, I really believe I didn't even fully understand until I went out on my own and started yeah. to pay my own bills. Right. Mm-hmm. But I want them to at least get a sense of, you know, and I think my teenage daughter is getting it a little bit cause she's got like a credit card now and mm-hmm. she knows how to like, mm-hmm. you know, she does chores and spends her money on the things that she wants to spend. And she can't believe like, wait, I don't have any more money left in my, you know, like it's starting to set in a like little bit. Like the value of it all. The value of it all. Mm-hmm. But I think it's more of just also, we were saying this the other day, we had a, full conversation where I was just like, you know, mommy comes home and cooks dinner. A lot of the nights I try to, cause I mm. think it's important. Mm. And, um, you know, but then there's dishes and dishes need to be put away. And I was like, that's where you, everybody else needs to come in too right. and help. Yeah. Like yeah. I always had chores, yeah. big mm-hmm. chores too. Not, not just little chores, but yeah. big chores. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I know it's, it needs to be age appropriate, yeah. you know, but, um, I, I have a constant kind of moral dilemma of like, you know, you grind so hard to give your child all the things you didn't have yeah, when you were growing right. up broke. And that's very true. And then, but then it's like I learned so much from being broke. Yeah, and they don't learn and like, they become assholes. Yeah, I, know. I, don't I mean the hard asshole. part in his case is that my mom calls him um, in Korean. It's called tal pabo. Tal which, pabo, which that means mean? is that you're an idiot for your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's like a Korean yeah, phrase. It's yeah, like yeah. the dad can. They're so stern about everything, yeah. but when it comes to their daughter, Isn't they that fucking funny? crumble. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I can see that. And I and look, I don't have kids yet. Yeah. We're going to start trying soon. And I'm like, I'm not going to do what Tim does. <laughs> and then even with his daughter, I can't say no. It's so hard. It's dude. hard. They They're really cute. You, they love you. I know. It's like those, you know, those, you know, animated movies where they do that with yes. their eyes and they get all big and they're like, you know. Yeah. Oh, Let me tell you this. For the first time, you know, I've, I've really had to start calling her a bad girl lately, right? Oh, that's mm. funny. And, um, because she's been kind of like a little naughty. Attacking her little brother a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. other day, she bit the shit out of his finger, right? And, yeah, I know. Out the blue. And so, I was like, Veda, it's curiosity. I know. And, it's not and evil. It's usually curiosity. I know. And, you know, she's probably just has all types of Jealousy. feelings. She doesn't know yeah, how to explain yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, bit the shit out of his finger. <laughs> Does he still have his finger? This isn't the first time. Thank God. Yes, yeah, still have okay. it. So, I'm like, Veda, this, this is like, you're being a bad girl, right? Yeah. And so, immediately, like, I have probably told her this once ever before this, uh-huh. right? So, now she's like crying hysterically. She keeps saying this. She's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? How <laughs> Like, Veda, I don't understand you. She goes, I want to be a good girl. And I was like, oh. and I was like, all right, look, you're a, you're a good girl. You just you've been doing bad things because mm-hmm. I feel you so guilty. I feel you made so bad, bad choices. Just making her Honey, feel I'll bad. Honey, I'll tell you, Tim, they will push you to a place that you never thought you'd ever go oh. at times, and you just you'll 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 have moments like that. Yeah, you really will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I there's some markers in my in <laughs> in, in my mo in my life with my kids. Yeah. One of them with my daughter, where I kind of did the same thing. She was so naughty. She was so bad in public. Ugh, the worst. In public. Bad. Yeah. I think people, I was taking her out of a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I think people thought I was stealing her because she was screaming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Like, Stranger! Like, like, literally You thought, have my face. I, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And yeah. I got her into the car seat. And I can't believe this came. This is the other thing. It's shocking what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're almost like you don't even think. But I told her I was going to drop her off where bad girls go. Yeah, there you go. And she's going to be left there. Yeah, And yeah, she yeah. literally shut the F up right, right away. She's right. like, <gasps> oh, there it is, dude. But see, that's what? awesome. That's yeah. the great thing, though. It's yeah. like you've had such a good relationship with your kids. Like words matter, right? Like mm-hmm. when, yeah. Like me growing up, I didn't have a great relationship with my parents mm-hmm. because they were working all the time. Yeah, and so they would do things by instilling fear. So it wasn't like the fear-based gonna, parenting. Yeah, um, it's like you're yeah. not going to go where you know where bad boys go. It's like I'm literally going to chop your body up and put it in a bag. <laughs> you know, I, should, I feel like I should Maybe start. I should try that. I should start doing a little more of that. <laughs> Because they, they don't take me seriously at this point. <laughs> every, every Korean kid out there, if I told you this phrase right now, they would know. It's like they every Korean parent has yeah. told their kid, I found you somewhere under a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and then we always just grow up thinking we were adopted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, the yeah, popular yeah. phrase. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, so funny. we are going to reflect on our past trauma and we'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, 
Yo, if you have a family like I do, you know how much your loved ones depend on you. Too much. God, get a job, Beta. In a worst case scenario, you wouldn't want them to worry about money, right? A good life insurance plan can give you peace of mind and if something happens to you, your family will have a safety net to cover mortgage payments, college costs, or other expenses so they can get back on their feet and focus on what's most important. Look, you never know. I could be walking around one day and then some little rabbit dog high on PCP comes and bites my dick off and I bleed out on the street, okay? Let me tell you from personal experience. It is super satisfying to check life insurance off your to-do list, all right? And getting covered can be even more satisfying when you use Policy Genius. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. That's why their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price, okay? With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, and anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of getting life insurance so you can protect the people you love. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to PolicyGenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's PolicyGenius.com. I tell you this, um... Being with Chia for like 12 years now, I have never heard her yell mm. until this past month. Yeah. Like, that's the oh, first she time. pushed yeah. her, huh? Yeah. It gets, I mean, I, I've said this, I've said this before. Literally, kids will push you to a place that not even your husband or wife or, mm. partner, right. or, or family member of the other side could mm. ever do. Mm-hmm. Kids get in, and I, and I truly believe it's because... It literally is a piece of you mm-hmm. that they know how to get in there so deep, mm-hmm. so deep yeah. that it's hard. Woo wee! Yeah, your show sucked, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why, like, you know, my husband, if he were to say, you know, really didn't love that dinner tonight. But, then, <laughs> oh. but you know what I mean? But then, like, my kids, they'll say it, and yeah. I'll be like, Are you, you? joking? <laughs> <laughs> what? It is like. That joke's not funny, Dad. Oh. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. Nah, no, she, she would never. She would never. When, <laughs> when, I, when I first started dating my wife, um, she decided that she wanted to cook for me. Now, mind you, she can't cook. <laughs> That's so, so sweet. So she <laughs> My husband cook. knows not to go there. <laughs> she, uh, so she decided to make me dinner, but it wasn't really making me dinner. She got pre-made food and just put it up on plates. <laughs> but well, this, there's, there's an art to, you know, putting it together. A hundred percent. Here's the problem, though. <laughs> She this uh, these Korean side dishes need rice. This woman mm. cannot make rice. She yeah. can now. She can now. Is so, she Korean too? She's Korean as okay. well. So she made rice, and this shit was mush, <laughs> right? And I just sat Aww. there, and mind you, I'm like 280 pounds at this point. God damn. Yeah. All right, man. I know. <laughs> you were a big boy. I was a, I was a big boy. <laughs> you were a big boy. I took a bite of the food. And I was like, I'm full. And then she looked at me. She goes, yeah, right. <laughs> She's like, you're 280 pounds. What do you mean you're full? And I'm like, I just. Started it's, a it's diet? Not, it's just not good. <laughs> and? Till this day, she refuses to let it go. It has <gasps> stuck with her. It's been nine years. Wow. And she's still upset about it. So whenever she makes something, she goes, yeah, I bet you won't eat it, though. And I'm like, all right, relax. It's I just woke up. Like, maybe, what, what are you yelling at me for? Maybe it was like porridge. You ever think of that? It was not. And then <laughs> I Rice ate. Rice pudding? Mm-hmm. It, was, it was mush. And I ate it. And then she goes. She says the funniest thing. She just makes an excuse off the back, immediately defensive. She goes, that's how my grandma made it. <laughs> and I'm like, I asked her mom, I was like, did she, did, did your mom, grandma make rice yeah. mushy? She goes, no. I'm like, yeah, you lied. <laughs> you lied. Um, I had a friend, and then I'm going to ask you if you've ever, if this has ever happened to you. Okay. But I had a friend who made me some very bland pho one time. Shout mm-hmm. out to Asia Dang. Um, that's who made it. Uh, <laughs> and I can say that because of how the story ends. Okay. Um, it was we, Asia. It was Asia. So we had a um, a Game of Thrones like watch like party, party at mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. my friend's house, Asia mm-hmm. Dang and Brian Pouspol. Shout out to them. And she was like, "Hey guys, I made pho for the for for the night." We're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, amazing homemade pho. Sounds dope, right?" We super go, excited. Super excited. We go first upon first sip of the broth because you know the broth is like it's gonna tell mm-hmm. you everything you need to know, right? On, upon first sip, I was like, oh, this just tastes like water. <laughs> oh, no. Like, so what do you think? So did you find out? Well, okay. So I, I, I of course, you know, kept eating. I didn't want to insult her pho. Yeah, you know, that's like, very sweet. I think it was probably her first time making pho. Yeah. 
And um, my boy Benji ate it so fast. He was like, oh man, that shit was trash. I need to just get, I need to just get it over with yeah, and like be yeah. done, right? So my, I never brought it up to her because I didn't want to embarrass her. Yeah. I didn't want her to feel bad about it. Literally never brought it up, right? This except is years for, later now? Yeah, except okay. for like behind her back, joking. <laughs> of course behind her back. <laughs> so That's years, the problem behind her back. <laughs> years later, she goes, can I tell you something? That pho I made you was so bland and I think about it all the time and I was like, I thank you for acknowledging that because I've been keeping it. Yes, because it's been eating away at me Aww. how bad that pho was and I've wanted to bring it up. If I That's ate that so pho, I would have told her it was bad. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can't sit there. So well, I, he told his wife it was bad. I know, he's going well, yeah, to tell somebody I'm else. learning now over the few years, mm -hmm. like when I was a kid, I used to get my ass beat for lying. Right. Yeah. So my dad hates liars. Yeah, I, I'm kind of the same way. I, I, hates, I, I, I think it's one of the worst qualities in, in he somebody. He hates white lies. He hates any type yeah. of lies. So yeah. for me growing up, <clears throat> like whenever I start trying to lie, it just <clears throat> kind of makes me like twist a little yeah. bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, you yeah, yeah. your ass beat for lying. So I still start, think there's a way around it without having to lie. I've always, I've always said that. And you know, when we started going on the space, like we, you know, we're talking about these stories or whatever, and I had to learn how to like change certain because not everybody wants their information public, mm -hmm. but I'm so bad at it. Yeah. I would just start locking up as I'm telling the story because I want because <laughs> I have to <laughs> yeah because I have to like change details yeah, as yeah. I'm going yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm just not used to that. Yeah. So when I started dating, the one day this is like our third year together, she goes, "Hey, can I ask? So I need a favor from you." I'm like, "What?" She goes, "I need you to learn how to lie." It's like you. Always say everything on your mind. Yeah. And you don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. if sometimes you don't like something, just leave it alone. Yeah, just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. And that was like the hardest thing for me because now Interesting. I just. Interesting. But I that's just, because you were raised that way. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it was just a little different. Yeah. And now I'm learning, like, okay, you know what? Why lies are not bad sometimes, or sometimes you have to learn how to not, finesse it. I just not True. say anything. You just got to put a little sugar on top, yeah. bro. That's all it is, Tim's man. That's the best, dude. I see Tim navigate through social settings. Oh, like, I'm damn, sure. Jedi. <laughs> yeah. I'm over here like, hey, I feel what's like with I'm that? like that too. I've been doing it since I was young. So, yeah. You know? It's, teach, it is a talent. Please teach the audience and me. How? <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I've said this a million times, right? Because some people will look at, oh, you're being so fake. But in this world, in this Hollywood world, yeah. I treat everything like um, with coworkers. Yeah. yeah. So when, when yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. to work at a restaurant, you know, you're you're treating your coworkers nicely. Yeah. It's, that's all yeah, it is. Yeah, They're yeah. not your friends. Yeah. They're coworkers. So yeah. it's like when you're at these smoochy events, these aren't like your friends that you're being fake with. These are people you're, mm -hmm. you're all just being... Mm -hmm. surface level nice to yep. each other and right. that's just how right. it is it's right. work you know and everything with a smile that's my yeah. mom said just do it up with a smile oh, that's so good <laughs> so I just have to hide behind him sometimes <laughs> and we'll go out and do social settings like, that's hard for you to hide behind yeah. him <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you wow <laughs> Wow, Tiffany. <laughs> no, I meant height. Would wow. you stop? Stop. Hey. I can't even hide behind him. <laughs> hey, you're short. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Tiffany. Wow. Not only is she beautiful, she knows how to roast, and I love it. <laughs> wow. I love it so much. <laughs> wow. I know. I'm in love. I'm in love, too. Um, I was going to ask you this. When we were talking about the, the bland pho, you know, in your years of learning to cook and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you ever have a meal that you were like very excited for someone to taste and you could just tell they were like not feeling it? Hmm. Or like something where you're like, oh, this did not turn out the way I thought it was. Well, I mean, I've had total <laughs> mishaps in yeah. the kitchen and like, yeah, I forgot to get an ingredient and had to improvise and the improvise was like shit. And mm. all. Yeah, totally. I'm trying to think of like, I think it's harder on the other end, like almost like he was saying. Like not so much the one serving, but the one who's tasting, mm. and you're like having to be like, yeah, this is this is, this is good, <laughs> right, you know, right, right, like right. like Thanksgiving, like you know, mm. when I met my husband, and I love my in in laws, and I'm gonna say this, I could not love my in laws more, right, right, um, but their style of Thanksgiving is very different than the style of Thanksgiving that I grew up doing. Interesting. Everything was homemade. Oh. Nothing came out of a can. Mm. Really? Right? And so my husband's like, well, where's the canned cranberry sauce? Oh, he, he preferred I'm like, it. You mean that jelly shit that <laughs> yeah. comes out of a can? Yeah. You know what I mean? And like cranberry sauce is the easiest thing to make on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but it's just different styles, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, like I remember the first Thanksgiving, it was like, oh, mm. oh, this is very different. Yeah. You I, know? So I and remember it's not like I had to lie, but it was like, I'll skip the cranberries. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> like I, I grew yeah. up watching, you know, we didn't have cable growing up, right? Couldn't afford it. So public television was the main thing that I watched. I actually probably learned how to speak English because of public television, yeah. right? Because I wasn't born here. Oh yeah, Sally Jesse Raphael. <laughs> Is that how you learned it? <laughs> no, I <laughs> <laughs> mine was like reading Rainbow, uh, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. 
Mr. Rogers, yeah. yeah. Jerry Springer, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jerry Springer. <laughs> oh, that was your <laughs> bad words. That's it. Yeah, that's how I like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. your bad words. The Cindy Margolis show. Yeah, you guys remember that? <laughs> kind of. Kind of. So Cindy Margolis had a, Wait, a late night show. Was she the blonde? Yes. Yes, I know who she is. Mm. Yes, 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 when I was I having know. puberty. Yes, I, wish, yes. I remember. <laughs> I know exactly who that is, yes. Uh, but uh, what the fuck was I talking about? I just started thinking of Cindy know, Margolis and I went... <laughs> You thought about boobs and then you were like, can't oh, yeah. anymore. Uh, public, public television, uh, your basic public channels. Television. Oh, yeah. So I grew up watching a lot of cooking shows growing up, oh. right? And so, you know, my introduction to American food was obviously like the small fast food that we had. But mm -hmm. I never really had like American sit down food. Mm -hmm. We just only cooked at home. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. Mm. And whenever I had McDonald's or whatever, that was like a treat that yeah. if my parents' friends would take us out or whatever. My parents never got us that stuff. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So when I when I started cooking myself, I was like, oh shit. Like I get to try the canned stuff and whatever, whatnot. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is very interesting. Yeah. Then I went to um a, bu a buddy of mine, his parents cooked everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is what cranberry sauce is supposed to look like. <laughs> yeah. I had no fucking idea. Yeah, right, I was like, this right. is way better. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah, kind yeah. of the same for me in terms of like I didn't get exposed to too much American food until cafeteria days. Mm. That's where I really grew to love like Sloppy Joes and oh, shit like that. Like my yeah. mom wasn't making Sloppy Joes at My home. mom made Sloppy Joes oh. all the time. Man, see, oh, I, yeah. I never had that until I was Yeah, we got, a, sloppy, we got a Sloppy Joe recipe in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I'm excited because yeah, yeah, I yeah. love me a Sloppy yeah, Joe. Yeah, Sloppy Joes are good. But same shit where, um, you know, Watching shows or like forget Emerald Lagasse yep. and yeah. shit, you know, I'm like he, he was the king. Yeah, and yeah. these are like foods I had never would have experience with, and that's why I, you know, so me and David have a um a food travel show called Sin Foods. It was called Sin Foods. Yeah, I would say that's what it used to be called. Yeah, now it's called When Foodie Calls, and one of my main things was like, you know, we grow up watching these food shows that are very, um, almost like. In the beginning, it was very bougie. Everything, yes, you yes, know, yes, was yes, like yes, almost. Yes. If you didn't know about food, then you know what they were. You didn't know yeah. what they were talking about. Yeah. So I wanted to do something where a little more relatable. Yeah. You know, we, were, we might be eating some bougie shit, but also it's 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 accessible. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and here we are, mm. eating and talking about eating. Yeah. Good. How about that? I used to love <laughs> Julia Childs. Oh yeah. Jacques Pepin, Martin yep. Yen, yep. Uh, Ming Tsai, all these guys, man. And like I remember watching. Uh, Julia Childs like first do it was Jacques Pepin and Julia St uh, Childs doing um, the French omelet. Mm. And I remember my mom got so many. I used like forty eggs. And she was <laughs> right because you were trying to perfect trying to the yeah. technique and, of it all. Yes, and yeah. it was so fucking hard. And mind you, I'm like twelve. How, I was gonna say, how old were you? I was like twelve okay. years okay. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just like Aww. cracking all these eggs. Aww. And I just remember trying to do this. Did you finally nail it? I could do a French omelet yeah. now, but yeah. now I'm trying to do the Japanese omelet. Ooh. Yes. Can't do it. Yeah. I, I, I think I'll I have not tried the Japanese omelet, but it's on my <clears throat> list to try. Yeah, I, I haven't I tried it either. Do, I, ha I know how to do the French one. <laughs> it's fucking hard, man. Yeah. Like, I um, wasted so many eggs. Yeah. And, you know, when you go to Japan and you eat that omelet, mm -hmm. it's not two eggs. It's like fucking eight eggs you're eating. Mm -hmm. It's that much oh, eggs. it's so yeah. big. <clears throat> it's and then he has so to big. Do the, yeah. 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 So when I first tried making it, I just cracked three eggs and it just barely covered the pan. Yeah. So I did that's eight. the thing. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, like a, a, a little <laughs> tiny one. <and> you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the hard part is is like setting the skin and then still having it be somewhat running in the middle, sort of middle. soft. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And then molding that part is very fucking difficult. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. So I just eventually just gave up because we just throwing away eggs <laughs> in yeah. the house. Because who's gonna eat thirty eggs in a day? You know what I mean? But dogs you got any dogs? <laughs> our dogs allergic to eggs. Oh, you need a new dog. <laughs> 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 Hey, my dog LA is hell. Uh, <laughs> it's allergic to pork, beef, lamb. What? Okay, everything. so I, I, I'm just very curious, only because of a personal story. One of our dogs, I feel like, has some allergies, and we're trying to figure it out. Mm. How did you find out your dog was allergic to all that shit? So, did you go and take it to like a normal little prick test? <laughs> so we did. We had to go through this whole thing because um, my wife's best friend adopted the same dog in the same litter. They look, you know, fairly identical. Yeah. Yeah. Our dog wouldn't stop sneezing. They ate the same food. Huh. Their whole, That's her whole crazy. face was red. Oh. Just from at night because you just tear up because oh. of the allergies. And I'm like, oh, baby. And you know, my wife, she's just like, uh, I don't know if this is right. And for me, I'm like, it's a dog. They eat meat, whatever. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Give them the chocolate. Got a test. Allergic to everything. everything. Took out everything but seafood. Face cleared up. Seafood. No more sneezing. None of that stuff. And so huh. that was a little pescatarian. I didn't know wow. dogs would be allergic to meat. Yeah. That's the yeah. weirdest thing ever. They can be allergic to environmental stuff. I had, I had a dog that was allergic to trees, grass, everything. And mm -hmm. I'm like, how can it be a dog? I know. What, what do you mean? How could it be a That's dog? That's like half their joy in life. I know. 
That's it's crazy. crazy. So we had to go do all the like pricks and, you know, had to do the shots and all that shit. Wow. It was terrible. So wait, what does he do now? Well, like, it's dead now. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, this was a dog a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's sleeping forever. <laughs> he, he Below a, the grass. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but yeah, it was, it's just crazy. But I was just, we're having some issues with one of our dogs. So I was just curious if. Uh, What's the breed? Well, we, this is going to be really funny. So we have four dogs. Okay. Two of them are massive dogs. One's a Great Pyrenees. It's about Yeesh. 240 pounds. Gigantic. No, but mm. this is like the largest Great Pyrenees really? you've ever seen like in a your horse. life. No, like bear a polar killer. bear. Oh, a God. Polar Straight bear. up bear killer. Yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah. bear, but wouldn't hurt a fly. Yeah. Like the thing is so mm. gentle. Just like David's song. Mm, see? <laughs> gentle, gentle giant. Gentle giant, <laughs> Yeah, dude. And then we have a Great Dane as well. Wow, you love so, them big the dogs. The big old dogs. Well, well, my husband's 6'4", too. I do oh, love them. Oh, big. okay. Yeah, so, you love them big dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but my husband is adamant that it's our Great Pyrenees. Mm. And I'm kind of like, I don't know. Because my our Great Dane has the gas. Okay. And so we've separate them. We separate them now at night. And we're trying to figure out who's the one who's having the accidents in the middle of the night. Oh. Right? Okay. And so we have had no accidents with the Great Pyrenees, mm -hmm. but our Great Dane, who we've separated, has been getting us up early to go to the bathroom. Okay. Oh. So now I'm thinking it's the Great Dane. Huh. Oh. I mean, like, dogs are so complicated. I mean, this sometimes. is like crime right here. This is like <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure it out. I get out. so sad, like, when I, like, with big dogs. The big dogs typically live a lot, uh, they live shorter yes. lives. Yes. Mm. And so, like, with Great Danes, uh, I used to be a dog trainer for a couple of years. Oh, really? So, like, Great Danes, if you guys don't know, like, they'll you'll see, like, certain signs that the dogs, like, on the way of passing away, they'll start chewing at their paws because oh. their heart isn't pumping enough where there's enough circulation getting to their paws and their limbs. And is that see. what that is? Because she does that. Is that's how old funny. Is she now? How old is she now? We had, don't know. She's She was rescued. So we're oh. guessing that's, maybe that's eight, usually, eight or nine, you know? If it's eight or nine, that's really long for a yeah, Great Dane. Yeah, no, I know. We had Great Dane mixes. She's also a little bit of a mix, but more Great Dane. We had other Great Dane golden mixes, and they lived till 14. Yeah, that's like one of those signs that... <clears throat> They're, they're probably not getting enough circulation through their limbs, and mm -hmm. they'll start chewing at their paws. That's like one of those things. As I they thought get it was older. more of like a um, like a fungus kind of thing. That like happens a, too. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, <clears throat> But those are like one of those signs that you you look for in those dogs. Yeah, at interesting. That age. They're just getting older. Yeah. The heart's not yeah. as strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but they're so beautiful. Though. They're she's mm. so pretty. Yeah. she's such a pretty pretty. They they're, both are. They uh, both are. Like my friend who had a Great Dane, she was telling me that her Great Dane, like Great Danes. Or heard, I don't know if it's for all the breeds, but mm -hmm. they forget how big they are. Yeah, <laughs> oh, completely. So they forever think that but they're that's a lot how our great But that's how our Great Pyrenees is. Has no recollection of how, how large he is. <laughs> that's adorable. He will step on my foot and break it. Like, it's like literally. Pounds. He's bigger than my husband. That's he weighs yes. bigger than my husband. For real? If Do you, you have a photo? If, yes. I have to see this. If he were to get up on his hind legs, which he can't oh, because God, he's so yeah. big, he would be... Oh. He would be uh, he would be taller than my husband, who's six four. Shit! What? Yeah, That's fucking crazy. isn't that crazy? That is pretty crazy. It's crazy. Like uh, I here here's all of them. Oh, yeah. so, so that's a so great big. that's a great dang. <laughs> that's a big now I'm gonna show dog. you I'm gonna show you the dog. Literally, Jeez. that's know. that know. dog too, next to a it. fucking Great Dane is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you next to the kids. Okay. Then you're really gonna see. <laughs> how big this dog is. And again, he is so damn sweet. <laughs> he really is the sweet. The, I mean, this is his face. Look at his face. Look Ado at his face. Adorable. He's like half human. You got to pick up that poop with both hands. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> well, that's what's been so frustrating. My husband is getting so pissed because it's one of the big dogs because it looks like my husband's shit in the kitchen when I come down. It's like an excavator? You know what I mean? Like, what if you it's literally. Your, what if it's I can't actually do, your husband? My hands are tiny. I can't do a, mm -hmm. I can't do a thing. It's like a third and then I, How much you want to bet this is, a, this is a very long prank from your husband? From your husband? Yeah. And he's, and he's pooping. He's just cracking up. Oh my God. <laughs> Who did this again? He walks I away. literally, I, okay, so you can really see his head. Oh my. That's my son's head. That's a giant. Shit. It's like never ending story dog. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dude, that's so fucking crazy. That is pretty crazy. Isn't dog. that crazy? This is like the average size of a wolf. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, not even. He's bigger than a wolf. He yeah, really, I mean, people in our neighborhood who have never seen him because <laughs> most people know because we walk him. <laughs> Um, very little because he's real slow. Yeah, you know it takes a lot for him to mm -hmm. move. You know, but we get we try to get him to walk every day a little bit, and people are like, "What is that? <laughs> yeah. Is that literally a polar bear? It's got to be part polar bear." Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh. "Have you been to a, a wolf sanctuary before?" Yes, I have. Those things scare the shit out. I this is a funny story. Jason Priestley, uh -huh. who was on that other show that I was on, that was yeah. super popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a wolf. 
Like he actually owned a wolf. It was like a 90% wolf. Oh, shit. That's yeah. fucking nuts. That's scary yeah. as shit. A purple tongue. It's yeah. scary. Crazy. Like, Crazy, wolf's crazy. Heads are like massive. There was this, it was a very the wolf sweet sanctuary dog, that at the it was time. Really very sweet. One of the wolves that they had that was the most. It was like close, to like ninety percent, and it was substantially bigger than the other dogs. And I just remember, um, my a bunch of my friends went before, and I just wanted to go. I couldn't go out that day, mm-hmm. so I just went by myself. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I just want to see these wolves. Mm-hmm. I love it. They're loser. beautiful. Loser. Yeah. I go in, and this guy was like, <laughs> <laughs> the trainer was like, "Okay, when you go inside, try not to make any sudden movements. They might attack." I'm like, Jeez. "I'm okay." Yeah. <laughs> so, I just stand yes. outside and I just watch them. I'm like, why would you? Why, I'm not going in there. That's fucking crazy, dude. And the wolves are looking at you like, who's this fucking loser? He came by himself. <laughs> won't even, won't even come inside. No, he's just looking at me like this, just licking their. Yeah. <laughs> that could feed all of us. <laughs> Do you remember all that 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 uh, video on Instagram and all the socials about that coyote that attacked that little girl? Do you remember that one? Yeah, 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 that yeah. Was crazy. She was like a three-year-old. Oh, poor grabbed, baby. Grabbed the leg and was like literally about ready to take it away. Holy shit. It was crazy. My favorite video is this raccoon that attacked the mom. For a second, it looks like he has no pants on. Oh, that's how it always is. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, oh, there's your shorts. Okay. So this is short I, shorts. Okay. Tim knows. I right. rarely ever wear pants. It's it, always yeah, shorts. It's, it's shorts. Shorts, it's shorts and a t-shirt. You're a, you're a true California, Southern California kid now. Listen, I, I opened up a business in Hawaii as well, and it's, it's my people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just, get it. I can't, like, yeah. as I've gotten older, I just go, Comfort here, yeah. style is here. Oh, yeah. I, I, I uh, like take off my pants a lot, just ra- <laughs> randomly. At home, I'm hoping. No, no, no. no, we, no. When we're here, yeah. <laughs> here. Or just like mm. other, mm. other like. And actually, if 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 friends are over, that like I'm like that are like, if David's over, yeah. I'm probably just like yeah, I'll just, I'm gonna just take my pants off because yeah. you know like for what? But like all of it, or like you're in your underwear? No, I still have underwear on. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. And the, if the, it the, wasn't, I probably wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. The Thai chili dog. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the other day, Tim packs a punch. Yeah, the other day I uh, I was at the supermarket and uh, my wife's best friend is always hanging out with us because mm-hmm. we're we live right next to each other and Aww. they have the same dog, so they play with each that's other. So cute. Mm-hmm. But she only sees me at the house because that's just that's what we just came. where you yeah. And I'm always just either not with a shirt and just in my boxers is in the house. <laughs> She's gotten so used to it now, yeah. like nine years yeah. of it. Yeah. So when she sees me in public. I saw her. She probably doesn't recognize me. Doesn't you. recognize yeah, me because yeah, I have yeah. clothes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she looked at me. We kind of slightly walked by each other and stopped. And she goes, oh, my God. She goes, I'm so used to seeing you half naked. <laughs> I didn't know it was you, dude. But it's nine years of that. That's so, so funny. We never see each other in public. That's hilarious. That's real friendship there. Yeah, dude. I guess mm-hmm. it is. Well, now is the time of the podcast where oh, we, yeah, what do we do? all take our pants off. Oh, oh. Um, perfect. Got it. Well, I'm not wearing underwear. Oh, oh well, just, then watch the rest. Just kidding. Watch the rest on OnlyFans. Thank you so much for oh, you're welcome. coming on. And- Thanks for having me. I feel very special that you've never had a guest on this show. Um, You should, Tiffany. Okay, Gieson. good. Good to know. <laughs> this podcast went by so fa- fucking fast. It's crazy. It's already yeah. been an hour. Is it like an hour? Yeah. Yes. Wow, because look we at love that. you. It was a great conversation. That's so sweet. And um, hey, man, look, as I've said before, oh, just being able to work with you. I know. I feel be, the same. Just being The, lo- it, the was, love is there. The love is big. It was such a, you know, a trip from the beginning. And now it's like, I feel like, you know, like we're friends. Yeah, well, we are, right? <gasps> so I mean, weird. I haven't seen you in your underwear, but <laughs> we're not that, that kind of friends yet. When, when he <laughs> booked that that one show, <laughs> yeah. he was just like, guess who I get to work with? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, who? And he said your name. And I was like, I hope you die. Yeah. 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 And guess what? The pants are coming off very soon. <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. Uh, one more time. Uh, make sure you follow Tiffany Thiessen. Pick up her book. When does that come out or is it already out? It's uh, out on the 26th. So it depends on depends on when this comes out. Yeah. It, it might just be out. Or maybe not. Well, it'll 20, be 20, out. 20, it'll yeah. be out. It'll be out. It'll yeah, be it out. will be out. It'll be out either the next day or the, or it was already out. Cool. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tim John DeRoxy. I'm David Stowe. Bye. I'm Bye. Tiffany Thiessen. Yo, it's the dudes. Behind the food, dudes. Behind the food.